Okay, I'm going to make a sash profile scraper. So the scraper edge matches the profile of the molding profile of the sash. So here on the interior side of the sash, this is the molding profile right here. Here's the lower band and the OG and the upper band. So I'll grind the scraper blade to match that shape. This is the setup of the sash at the bench. I've set it up vertically clamped to a stop that's fastened to the front edge of the bench. So I just got that clamped in place to hold it vertical and stable. first step is to remove about three inches of the paint buildup from the sash. That paint buildup has a thickness that can affect the molding profile so I have to get rid of it to get the true shape of the wood underneath. I've got my hot air gun set to about 290 or 300 degrees and that's warming up the paint film so I can easily scrape it off without damaging the wood. So for this I've used a scraper that just has some square edges and little rounded edges and bevels and just carefully work the old paint off of the wood surface. I'm just being careful not to uh, scratch the wood. I'm starting with a Marshalltown E1247 Sima scraper blade. That's part of the Marshalltown paint scraper series of products. And I'm just going to prepare the scraper blade by grinding away this extra metal here on the ends. It's important to keep the steel cool so it doesn't lose its hardness. Grinding generates heat and that heat can warm up the metal and soften it. So every so often I'm going to dip it in the water to keep it cool.
This is the scraper with the blade attached. This is the blank that we just prepared. So I set the edge of the scraper right across the molded profile of the sash. Here I'm just setting the uh, edge of the blade right on the heiress, right here, this ridge between the band and the curved part of the profile. Then I set the edge of the blade also on the high spot of the curve, right there. So keeping the edge of the blade on both of those spots, I can change the angle of the blade. And setting on both those spots helps hold the scraper stable. So to find the right angle, I just know, I've done so many of these scrapers that that's the angle right there. It's about this high up here from here, and it's about this high from here. So to help you get that, I've uh, made this little gauge that shows a 35 degree angle. And that gauge is set at 35 degrees because 35 complements the 65 degree angle that's on the bevel of the scraper. So the edge on two points of the, pro of the molding profile and then the gauge aligned with the uh, sash and then adjusting the angle of the scraper. I think you'll be able to see I'm just aligning the bottom edge of the scraper with the top edge of the of the gauge by changing the angle of the scraper and that's it right there yeah okay now I use the same gauge and align the edge of the gauge with the back edge of the band on the molding of the sash and I'll hold it there then I'm going to align the shaft of the scraper with the edge of the gauge by looking straight down. And I think you'll be able to get that angle with the camera. That's it right there. All right now I'll just check this down. From this point of view, it needs a little adjustment. Okay, once more up above. That's it right there. So that's the angle for the next step. Step four is to scribe the profiled shape from the sash onto the scraper blade. First I'll just color that surface of that steel with a felt tip pen. I'll do this because it uh, makes it easier to see the scribe mark. I'm going to do the scribing with a machinist scribe and it has a little right angle point with a heel and a very sharp point that will scratch metal. So I'm going to set the scraper up so that it's touching the profile in two places. One on that heiress and one at the high point of the curve. And I'm holding it at the correct angle. 
So I'll set the heel of the scribe and just do a few practice strokes. Notice that I'm keeping the point parallel with the lines of the profile. Now, I'll set the heel on the molding profile and the point of the scribe right at the corner of the scraper. And then just scribe that shape onto the scraper. Now, you can see that I'm holding the scribe at a fixed angle and keeping it at that same angle as I make the stroke. So here, I think you can see the mark that I just scribed onto the surface of the scraper. Now that'll be good for scraping in this direction, but I want to be able to scrape in both directions. So I'm going to make a profile scraper on the other edge here that'll scrape in this direction. So I need to scribe that shape as well. So I'll get my angle here and here. And then scribe. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay. Ready for grinding. So here's the scribe line, and here's the part of the scribe line that will be the scraping edge. This part and this part won't scrape. They'll be rounded, safe edges. They won't be sharp and scraping. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I do the rough grinding here at the bench grinder. So I'm going to grind this part of the profile to that 65 degree bevel. And then these I'm going to grind to a 90 degree. I just roughed this out at the uh, bench grinder here.
Now you can see there's that 65 degree bevel and then here's a 90 degree be bevel over here. This will be a safe edge and this will be a scraping edge. Then check the profile back on the sash. Hold the scraper handle at the correct angle and shine a little flashlight back of the scraper blade and you can see where the light is shining through between the edge of the scraper blade and the wood profile on the sash. So if it's still way off and not a close match you may need to do step four again. Scribe the wooden profile onto the scraper blade and do the rough grinding again. When the shape is a close enough fit, I switch over to grinding with a Dremel grinder and a narrow cutoff wheel. I like to use the Dubro brand. DU-BRO catalog number 352. It has a fiber mesh reinforcement that helps keep it from breaking apart as it wears down and a very narrow cut which helps make controlled grinding on the scraper edge. For step seven, I round off the safe edges here and here with jeweler's files. It's important to get a nice rounded profile here because this will rub on the face of the sash. While I'm doing this, I'm being real careful not to let the file ride into the scraping edge right here. So in profile, that edge is rounded like this. Then I polish the safe edge with a strip of emery cloth, 400 grit and then 600 grit. That makes it nice and smooth so that it won't mar up the face of the sash. In step six I use jeweler's files to refine the shape of the edges. And also in step nine these jeweler's files leave a nice smooth surface on the edge and are profiled so that it's easy to follow the curves. The two files I like to use most are a tapered half round profile and a flat. These little sketches show the profiles of the files. It's 
So the final result is an edge that matches the profile of the wood on the sash. Here you can see the light shining through and then as I tip the edge down into place it excludes all of the light. Along here the scraping edge when the safe edges are riding flat against the face of the sash and the band of the profile. So when no light shines through, I know I've got the shape just right. So that's it. The profile scraper edge and the two safe edges. So for step 9 I sharpen the side edge of the scraper. I'm using a special scraper file that doesn't leave a smooth surface. The teeth are cut on it so that it leaves a slightly grooved surface and that leaves a little toothed edge along the working edge of the scraper that is more aggressive and works better at scraping. So special scraper file. And I always hold that at the same 65 degree angle. And I can get a good idea of what's happening at the edge and that I'm making a nice flat bevel by reflecting light off of that edge. Here I'm reflecting it off of my work light up here, right off that edge and then back up to my eyes. So I can see exactly what's happening on that surface of that bevel. And if I'm filing at the wrong angle, I can see that happening on the edge and correct the angle. Now I can feel a slight burr along that edge and I know it's sharp. And then I test the edge by actually scraping some paint. I'll just warm that paint up with my hot air gun to soften it. You can see the paint bubbling up. I have my hot air gun set to about 290 or 300 degrees. If it gets too hot it can burn the wood. So I keep it turned down as low as possible. First I scrape off the flats I need to do that so the safe edges can ride on the wood and then I scrape off the molded profile and you can see it cleans it right up real nice. There's just one little spot of paint right there. I could go back and reshape the profile a bit to catch it, but I think that's acceptable. So I think that's a pretty good final shape. So that ought to work pretty well for scraping the rest of this sash. 
Hold on. I just noticed that the scraper safe edge left a little groove. Very slight, but it just shows with this raking light coming across. So that means that the uh, safe edge here is a little high and maybe a little too sharp at that edge where it rode right along there. So this was just gouging into the wood a little bit. That needs a little more work. So I'll just use the flat jeweler's file and I'll just round that off a little bit. Where it was rubbing on the wood. And I'll just flatten out this left half of the safe edge a little more. so it doesn't dig into the wood. And then of course I have to polish off the safe edge with a, a little strip of emery cloth. So the final step in making your scraper is to have some fun scraping off sash moldings. Just a quick tip, when you get ready to use it, edge on the molding in 35 degrees towards the middle of the sash and up 35 degrees. That way the bevel of the scraper edge will match the profile of the molding.